Prince Harry has long warned and worried that what happened to his mum could happen again, citing the media as one of the main motives for moving to the United States. And with echoes in Tuesday night's alleged paparazzi chase of what Princess Diana faced, is he better off in the US? Well, to discuss this, we're joined by Paul Burrell, of course, Princess Diana's former butler, and royal commentator Richard Fitzwilliams here in the studio. Good morning, Richard. Good morning to both of you. Uh, Paul, if we could start with you, I wonder what your initial reaction has been to seeing the footage and hearing the statement from the Sussexes regarding what happened on Tuesday night in New York. Well, I wouldn't wish any harm uh, to come to Meghan and Harry, and they've obviously suffered a, a, an experience, but surely that experience is down to their lack of uh, security detail. Ironically, if they'd still been working members of the royal family, they'd have had royalty protection with them, and this incident wouldn't have happened. So, so really, I'm finding it difficult to compute all the, the different statements which are coming from the Sussex camp um, near catastrophic... Uh, chase, a relentless pursuit for two hours. I think this is a case of um, recollections may vary. And uh, I think it's been hyped up and it's, it's, a, it's a celebrity storm in a teacup. It's obviously felt very deeply by him and Meghan, though, and, uh, you know, whatever mm. words you want to use, triggering uh, is the common one, thoughts of what happened to his mum. Um, you yourself wrote a book about mm. your time, and I understand that, that yeah. Harry was very cross about that. You know, what do you mm. make... Have you had a chance to speak to him since? Is your relation with him good? Do you feel no. for him? Because you were so close to him for so long. Yes, close to both boys. And, you know, I still love them both because they're Diana's boys and I, I care for them. I, but, you know, Harry's gone off the rails and he's gone to a different country and doing a, a different project to his brother. Um, I, I haven't spoken to Harry. I wish he would have spoken to me before he'd printed what he said about me in his book um, mm -hmm. because we could have had a, a, a frank discussion about it. Um, actually, his book was written in completely different circumstances to mine. Um, I, I, I don't feel any animosity towards him. I wish him well. I wish him all the happiness in the world. But I wish he wouldn't keep making comparisons between um, what's happening to him and Meghan to Diana because this car chase through Manhattan wasn't uh, in any way, shape or form um, linked to Diana's uh, death in Paris. Princess Diana was avoiding the press on the night she died. Uh, Meghan and Harry were actually courting the okay. press well, let's um, come, let, during let, that car, all right, car chase. Let's, leave, uh, let's come to Rich in the studio on that. I mean, uh, Paul's quite sort of, you know, clearly has sympathy for what they've gone through, but feels like they've over-dramatised it. It's a storm in a celebrity teacup, I think was the phrase that he's used. What do you, what's your take on it? Well, I think, firstly, let's be thankful that no one was killed or injured because Quite. this was very serious and there's no doubt at all Mayor Eric Adams said it was reckless and irresponsible. And, frankly, the way the paparazzi pursued them, I mean, we have yet to ascertain the exact timeline, mm. but the mayor made clear that it was possible that two of his officers, uh, he'd been briefed on this, might well have been injured. Now, that's light years away from what Paul was saying. I mean, the point was that there was a particularly ugly and aggressive incident that went on for a very considerable period of time. And if we look from what we do know, with a taxi being used, that the visiting the police station twice and so on, and the fact that these the uh, paparazzi, in my view, were lower than vermin, and the fact they were allowed to get away with this, and the fact that there don't seem to have been arrests and court or cautions, I think is very concerning. Of course, for Harry, uh, it brings back terrible memories because he's been haunted his whole life by what happened to his mother since uh, her terrible death mm. in 1997. And you have paparazzi, flashing lights, a car chase. Uh, Doria Ragland is in the car with her, mm. uh, with uh, him and his uh, wife, Megan, so you've mm -hmm. got a ghastly situation. And, of course, when I heard this news, I mean, it was... Uh, it's absolutely devastating because instantly images flash back to what we know of that... But, Richard, when you hear the New York mayor or the New York police officer standing there and saying, I find it hard to believe that it went on for two hours, 
it doesn't sound like you could have a chase like that through the streets And there of were New no York. arrests and there were no cautions. Does that which... undermine that? Well, I think that we've yet to discover exactly what happened and the timeline, and there's no doubt, I mean, Harry has a case here against the Home Office with reference to his security, which was downgraded when there seems to be senior working royals and there are those who are linking what happened or the way it's been described, the allegations of what happened to that and the fact also that he wants to pay for security here and that would set a precedent. Mm. I mean, there's no doubt that there are people who believe that the Sussexes twist things, mm -hmm. but from Paul's point of view and what he was actually saying, I do think that there should be a tremendous amount of sympathy for that sort of ghastly experience, yeah. because of course it brings back. Harry said the moment he sees yeah. a click of a camera, he mm. thinks back to his mother. Paul, uh, uh, I know you're still listening to that. You know, mm. there is this court case, isn't yes. there? And he is uh, trying yes. to... He's offered to pay for it, doesn't want the taxpayers to pay for it, but wants yes. the police to take care of his security when he's here because they probably knows that they're the best at doing that. Um, does, do you think that influences the way all of this is perceived? And do you understand and is... have sympathy for the fact that he might be terrified yes. in that situation? Of course I'm concerned about Harry's mental health and Meghan's mental health in all of this because they've abandoned the best protection they could possibly have, which is royalty protection. I know that only too well. Mm. They would have taken care of them in this situation and they chose to go on a different path. It's interesting, isn't it, that this case in Manhattan now reflects on what Harry is trying to do in this country. I personally believe that Harry and Meghan are not working members of the royal family. They should not be protected by Scotland Yard or royalty protection because we, the taxpayer pays for that and the, and the police are paid for to look after the public, not after non-working royals. Fine for the royal family, of course, but they chose their path. They chose which way to go. They must now pay for their own security mm. and find a good security firm that will keep them out of this mess yeah. because it's all down to security. A-listers in America, they have security of their own. They're never in these situations. So why are Meghan and Harry always okay. in a situation creating a drama? OK, we're going to have to leave it there, Paul, but we appreciate you joining us this morning, which is good to get your okay. perspective as well. I mean, they did You're have welcome. their own security, didn't they? And that's his point. I think Harry wants to be able to pay when he comes over here. He's happy to pay it, doesn't want the taxpayer to pay for it. But to pay for Scotland Yard to do your security creates a, a, a real issue. But there's a precedent, yeah, yeah, exactly, as you pointed out, Richard.